Hello explorers and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna answer a question I got on my web components with polymer video and the question is hi Daniel thanks for your video I'm developing a web app using polymer and firebase or auth token for secure rest API calls with a backend I'm struggling with making a secure call from Polymer to the backend. Do you know of any good video or example which uh, can help me to do the same? Thanks a lot. And it's from Dehirjan. I'm sorry if I'm uh, pronouncing your name wrong. And I've talked a little bit about this with him. And uh, he has watched the Polymer Polycast videos and those are a great resource if you want to start with Polymer and get into using Firebase elements because they are touching some of these things but they are talking about the Polymer 2 API and these are the Polymer 3 API that I'm gonna take go into a little bit more today. So start off so we are on the same base nothing is safe and why that? I mean that nothing that you implement or do is purely safe. Um, even the lock on your door at home is not safe. It's just something to hinder somebody who wants to break in and that it should make take more time to break into your house. Or if you have an alarm, you just give the thief a little bit less time to take stuff from you. But actually, those things doesn't really stop anything, st stop anybody from doing it. It just gives, uh, requires a little bit more effort or a little bit more time to actually take something, and that is, holds true even for web products. And in this case, go even Google is hackable. We saw some reports that some student project went awry and actually hacked Google Docs and so on. So these things can happen and you need to keep that in mind when you're implementing against a web API. And if the responsibility at, is at some other place, so if Google has the responsibility for authentication and authorization, then you must keep in mind that their product is just as safe as Google makes them. And that might be okay for your application, or it might not, so you need to keep that in mind. And another thing that I want to touch briefly on is protocols. And by that I mean the way you are talking to your back end. And if you are using the web APIs for Polymer and Firebase, they are actually implementing everything correct for you, so they will use HTTPS. But if you're not doing that, if you're writing your own REST API, then it's very important that you use HTTPS, so you have a secure connection with the server. And that's very important, so you don't have any man in the middle listening to your traffic, and that you have authentication, that the server knows who's the client they're talking to him, it, and vice versa. So you know that you have a safe contract in the communication. For instance, if you have a server with a valid SSL certificate, you know that you're talking to that provider. So let's start with the first part of a successful login, and that's the authentication part. And in this stage, you are telling the server who you are as a user. And that can be done by either a username, pass email or password, or a provider like Google, Twitter or Facebook, or a custom OAuth token or web token. The first of these methods are the email authentication. In this case you create a Firebase app, provide auth domain, database URL and app key, and those are required to find your actual data in the Firebase database. Storage bucket and messaging sender is not required if you're not using those features. Then you set up a web component for the Firebase auth, give it an ID and a user object, and also an on error function callback. And the user object will actually get the user information that you have stored in your Firebase database. After that, you just sign in using the sign in with email and password function. 
giving an, a, an email and a password, of course, and then getting a promise back for a successful run, or it will catch any errors in the promise as well. The next method is the provider authentication. And the only thing you change here is that you actually add a provider to your Firebase auth. And after that, you do a signing with pop-up function, and it will pop up a window for your user on the Google site. And if they are already signed in, they just authorize the access. And if they are not, it will prompt them to log in to the provider, which could be Google, Facebook, or Twitter, and so on. The next one is a custom authentication. And in this case, you just change the um, function down here. And this could, one of the functions you can use is sign in with a custom token. So then you use a token that you have stored in your database and it will check if that token is the same as the token that you have in your system. The last custom authentication is if you want to use a custom OAuth token from a third party. This can be done as well by using the signing with credential function and giving it credential from your OAuth provider. The next part in the login procedure is the authorization function. And this is actually where you tell the system what the logged in user is allowed to do on the system or what is not allowed to do on the system. And let's take a very simple rule. For instance, if we want the system to check that the logged in user is a specific email from, let's say, if you're using the Google provider, you can check that you have a verified email on the Google provider and that the email token is actually to a specific email address. And this can be useful if you are writing a small application and you just want a few specific users um, that they should have right access to the application and everybody else can read it, but they can't actually change anything. So these rules are quite easy. You take the auth token, email verified, and that should be equal to true. And then you check that the auth token email is equal to some specified email. The next authorization is a little bit more advanced. In this case, you are giving a user a specific user area. And in the first part of the rules here, you say that the logged in user has access to write to this specific user area. So you say that users with the UID of the current logged in user, which you have in the auth token, should have write access. And you can also say that the current auth UID with the user ID token have read access as long as the auth token also has an emergency towel attached to it because that's very important if you are doing any transaction that you have your emergency towel close to hand. And lastly, you can have a specific area where each user has their own data. In this case, I have an inbox for each user. And then I can say that this user ID inbox, this user ID can only read um, messages in its own user area. So in the inbox, this user can only read its own messages. Next, I'm going to give some examples of some custom rules that you can use. And these are actually examples from the website on the, Poly on the Firebase authentication uh, tutorial. So these are quite expressive and the language actually has a very large amount of features that you can use. So the first here you say that messages can be read if the data, uh, the specific message, has a child element of timestamp and the value of that is 10 minutes from now. So that means that you can say that older messages than 10 minutes should just be removed. The next rule says that you can write messages if the root element of your store has allow write. So that could be a very specific 
um, parent rule to it, your whole system that you can turn off that now you never nobody can write and now everybody can write again so you can turn all, on and off writes access to your system and then you can check if the data parent has a child of read only so you can look at the current data and go one step up so let's say that the, this message is actually a child of a user then you can say that this user must have a read only tag that must exist and you can also check that it's not true in this case we check that it does not exist and the last thing you can sh actually look at the new data that you want to provide that you want to write and in this case the new data must have some uh, data point called foo so if the object doesn't have an attribute of foo then it's not allowed to be written to the database so now we have talking about how we authenticate to the firebase database and also how we uh, give authorization to different part of your database but another use case for the firebase authentication could be to actually use a third party or your own backend so how do you authorize uh, different things in your backend by the authentication that you did in the firebase login so you can use the provider on firebase but actually log into a different system. So here we have some client code and I omitted the login of part of the user. So if you have a logged in user, then you can look on at auth token, get the current user and get a token from the current user and force a refresh of that. So you actually get a fresh token because these token can be time based. So you need to have a fresh and not cached token back. And then you take that token and send to your server over HTTPS. That's, we are harking back to the thing I talked about earlier about protocols. It's very important that whenever you're talking to another service and going over the network that this tunnel that you're talking over is secure. And it, in case of an error, it catches that as well. So how does the server handle this then? So here we have some node code. It can be written in PHP, Java, C++, and so on. So they have a, a few different SDKs for different servers. So in this case, uh, on this node, I create an admin Firebase element or object. And then I require the account key json so you have a key file with all the uh, different keys that are required to talk to the firebase database and then i initialize my app give it credentials from the file and also the database name and when that that is done i need to on my uh, admin auth uh, object run the verify ID token on the data that was sent to the server and this function will both verify that you actually have a correct token that is made from Firebase and is something that the Firebase system acknowledge and when it does done have done that it will actually send back a decoded token with some data for instance you get uh, UID of the current uh, logged in user so you can query the database for more information about this user if required So this was pretty much everything I wanted to go through today I really hope that I answer some of your questions and I hope that this was useful for you and that you learned something today and if you have any further questions or if I missed some part of the current question, then please hit me up in the comments and I will try to answer you on that too. And I hope to see you in the next video.